Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look at the standard model. So let's get started. So what do we actually mean by the standard model in physics? Well, we say that the standard model is a successful model for classifying fundamental particles and their interactions. And remember, classifying just means sorting into categories, for example. It says it was developed in the early 1970s in an attempt to tidy up the number of particles being discovered and the phenomena that physicists were observing. And another way to think about the standard model is that it's a bit like the periodic table of elements, but for particles. It goes on to say that as it stands, the fundamental particles in the standard model can be represented by the following diagram. If new fundamental particles were discovered, this would need to be updated. So here you can hopefully see a breakdown of the fundamental particles and they're split into, first of all, matter particles and force mediating particles. And another word for matter particles would be fermions. Now these matter particles or fermions are split into two, so we have leptons and we have quarks. And we're going to go on and explore both of these in separate videos. So we have six different types of leptons, which are the electron, muon and tau particles. And then each of these has their own neutrinos. So we have the electron neutrino, muon neutrino and tau neutrino. And those are the six different leptons. We then also have quarks, and again, there's six types of those. So these are called the up, down, strange, charm, top, and bottom. And again, we'll go on and see these in more detail in a future theory video. If we then look at this side, we have our force mediating particles. So we have four of these called the gluon, W and Z bosons, graviton, and the photon. And it gives you a wee bit of information here about each. And each of these force mediating particles are associated with a fundamental force of nature. So we have one called the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force, the gravitational force, and the electromagnetic force. And the gluon is associated with the strong nuclear force. And this has a range of about 10 to the minus 15 meters and a relative strength of one. So we compare the relative strength of all these other forces compared to the strength of the strong nuclear force. For W and Z bosons, these are associated with the weak nuclear force and have a range of about 10 to the minus 18 meters and a relative strength of about 10 to the minus 6 meters compared to the strong nuclear force. We then have the graviton, which is associated with the gravitational force. This has an infinite range, but actually the smallest relative strength of about 10 to the minus 39 compared to the strength of the strong nuclear force. And this graviton is a hypothetical particle, it's not yet been discovered. And lastly, we have the photon, which is associated with the electromagnetic force. And this again has an infinite range, but a relative strength of about 10 to the minus 2. So in terms of the strength of the force, we have the strong nuclear force, followed by the electromagnetic force, followed by the weak nuclear force, and then finally the gravitational force is the weakest. And it then says we will now look at each part of this diagram in turn. So in future theory videos, we'll focus on different parts of this standard model. Now I've just got another example of the standard model to show you here, and this shows the same breakdown, but we also have a few different bits of information given in this one. So again, we have our particles split into matter particles, the fermions, and it says that all matter is made from fermions. And we have our force mediating particles, which are actually bosons, so they're not fermions. We then have our leptons, which we saw in the previous one, so our electron, muon, and tau particles. And they've also got their symbols next to them, so E for electron, mu for the muon, and tau for the tau particles. We then have the electron neutrino, muon neutrino, and the tau neutrino, where again, these have symbols given. We then have our quarks, and it says that hadrons are made from quarks. So quarks form hadrons like protons and neutrons, for example. It then says quarks have different mass and charge, but must combine to give a charge of one or minus one. And we'll go on and see this rule in the theory video for quarks. And our six quarks are given there, the up, down, strange, charm, top and bottom. And it goes on to show that they combine to form hadrons, which can be one of two things. So they can be baryons or mesons. And the baryons are made up of three quarks, whereas the mesons are made up of two quarks in a quark-antiquark -quark pair. So examples would be protons and neutrons for the baryons, and these are said to be stable. And for the mesons, we have things like pions and kaons, and these are said to be unstable. Then for the force mediating particles, i.e. the bosons, we've already seen these, but remember they're the gluon, W and Z bosons, graviton and photon. And again, there's a bit of information given for each, some of which we saw in the other diagram. So here we've got the gluon, which is associated with the strong nuclear force, and this acts between quarks. We then have W and Z bosons, which is associated with the weak nuclear force, and this acts between leptons. And it tells us that both of these have a short range. Then for the graviton, it says this is associated with the gravitational force, and the photon is associated with the electromagnetic force, and these both have an infinite range. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.